Hey guys, I'm Kai, hope you're doing well. And today I figured I'd give you an update on some of my breeder females. So stick around, you're watching Lucas Landon Royals. Hey guys, how you doing? I realize it's been a while since I give you an update. I did upload a couple videos in the past few weeks, but they have been really, really short. I did intend for them to be short. However, being that there was a content claim on my videos, they ended up to be shorter than I wanted, but at least I got some update for you guys. Today, I figured I'd give you an update on some of my breeder females, and we're gonna start with some of the ones that I've shown you before that were itty bitty. And now we're gonna take a look at them as they've all grown up, and hopefully we can get them to breed this season. Season. So I figure I start off with some of the ones that I produce myself and this one right here is a pastel pied 100% heft for exanthic. So I think she is just about big enough to start breeding. I would like her to feed a little bit more um, but she's not an aggressive feeder to be honest. So I'm hoping that she'll go. She has been locking and she is um, big enough to breed but like i said i do hope that she gets a little bit bigger gets a little bit more size to her but i won't be disappointed if she doesn't go because I'm not really expecting much out of this one just because she has a little bit more growing to do so this is the pastel pied 100 percent het for exanthic gorgeous little girl let me go ahead and get out the next one sticking with the Pied Exanthic project. This one right here is a black pastel pied 100% half for Exanthic, and she is the half sister to the last one that I showed you. This one was hatched a season after the last one, and you can see how quickly this one has caught up in size. So I am hoping that this one goes. This one has been locking as well, and uh, just hoping to get some different types of uh, Exanthic pieds. So hoping to get make some pastel versions and black pastel versions and then maybe some pewter versions down the road so this is the black pastel pied 100 percent heifer exanthic so let me go ahead and get the next one and still sticking to the exanthic pie project this one is a cinnamon double het exanthic pied and you know what? I actually messed up on the last one. The last one was not a black pastel. It was also a cinnamon because this one and the last one are clutch mates. This is a double het exanthic pie. So we have a little bit less of a chance to make some exanthic pies, but that chance is still there. Um, this one is even a better eater than the last one. You can see she is a little bit bigger. So I think it's just, it's just timing. Um, seems like Whenever I do my feeds, the last one that I showed you, the cinnamon pied, uh, goes into shed more, more often during feed days. And this one just happens to miss those, um, those sheds during feeds where it finishes sheds right before the feed. So this one did get a few extra meals. And like I said, is a little bit bigger, has been locking, but, uh, a little bit less of a chance, half the chance of making exanthic pies than compared to the last two, just because this is not a visual pied or visual exanthic. So I'm gonna put this girl away because they are very energetic now. Sometimes you just don't realize how many animals you have in the same project until you do a video like this. So this is one of the first um, girls that I produced for my exanthic pie project. Um, she's actually the sister to the pastel pied 100% heifer exanthic girl that I showed you first. And you can see how much this, how big this one is in compared to that other girl. Now, I think I feel about six follicles in this one already. Um, and this one, by the way, is a pastel heifer exanthic 66% heifer pied. I did keep two of these back. I'm going to show you this one first and I'll show you the next one later. But look at these continuous markings down its belly and side. And these are what we call pie tracks or pied markers. So it's, it's somewhat of an indication that this could be 100% het for pied, but we won't know until we breed her. But definitely 100% het for exanthic because a mom is a visual exanthic. 
So I think this girl will go because I did feel the follicles, but uh, still the follicles are a bit small, so there might be a chance of reabsorbing. I'm trying to prevent that from happening, of course. So I'm not gonna mess with her too much. I will put this one back and get out the next one for you. And right here is that next one. Looks almost identical to the last one I showed you. This is another pastel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down, girl. Pastel, head exantic, 66% heifer pied. Another clutch mate. Um, and we'll take a look at the pied markers on this one, the pied tracks. I think this one is not as strong as the last one, but you can still see that there's some continuous lines down its belly, along its, along its belly on the two sides. And this one, also feeling some follicles. I think this one is actually a little bit behind the last one I just showed you. And this one really moves. I don't know what it is with these, man. They just always want to move when I'm trying to do a video. I figure if I do a video during the day when they're supposed to be sleeping, they would mellow out a little bit, but seems to be, have the opposite effect here. But uh, just wanted to show this one off to you. So I got at least two chances right now of making some exantics, uh, exantipides with these two because they do have follicles. The other ones we're not sure yet. But uh, yeah, so far I'm pretty happy with throwing this one out and um, how she's progressed. Okay, so now we've gone past the exantic pied project and we are now going to discuss the exantic desert ghost project. So this is a pastel double het exantic desert ghost that I produced myself um, specifically for the exantic desert ghost project. This one was a female out of a clutch of eight. I think I got four females and four males. Um, I have sold some of those. I've sold half of the clutch, but I kept two males, a pastel and a lemon blast male. And I showed those off to you in a previous video talking about some of my male breeders. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link uh, or a card in this corner or this corner, I'm not sure yet. Um, so this one, like I said, is the double het. She is really, really excited to get out of here, I guess. Um, now I did feel some follicles, or at least I think they're follicles. I'm not 100% sure, but she did go off of food. So I think that might be a sign that she is building and she does feel cool to the touch. Usually if they're building, they kind of seek the cold side of the tub. So they'll feel a little bit cool. And when they're on the warm side, well, that might be an indication that maybe she reabsorbed or something might've happened. So something to watch out for. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get out her sister, which is a little bit more interesting to look at. So this one right here is a Lemon Blast, which is pastel and pinstripe, double het for Exantic and Desert Ghost. Now she's the only pinstripe pastel female out of the clutch. And the last one was actually the only pastel female out of the clutch. So of course I kept both of them. And as for the males, like I said, I have a video, but I'll tell you the males are a pastel double het and a Lutman Blast double het. And the reason I kept both of those males is because I wanted to make sure that when these females are up to size to breed, the males uh, don't disappoint me. So I have one as a backup. And it's really important to have male backups. But this one, look at her. She, she actually, I thought, had, thought I felt follicles in this girl. And she is still cool to the touch, but um, she was on the warm side. However, she doesn't feel warm. So I think maybe she was just regulating her temperature to make sure she doesn't get too cold. However, she did start feeding again. So that's quite interesting, something to watch out for as well. So when they start feeding, um, maybe they, they don't want to breed or maybe they're just trying to put on some additional size, some additional uh, reserves so to help them build those eggs and get more um, out of this season. So I'm hoping it's the latter. I'm hoping that she wants to build some more. So that's the girl right here. And not that's the girl right This is the girl right here that I'm really, really hoping will produce some Desert Ghost Exantics. And she does have 
an extra codom in the mix, so that's definitely going to be a plus. I'm going to go ahead and put her away and take a look at the next one. All right, so the next one that I intend to show you is actually locked with the male right now, so I don't want to disturb them. Uh, we'll skip that one for now. We'll go to this one, which is a bit of a surprise to me because I wasn't expecting this one to be this weight so soon. And this is a spider clown. I know some people um, dislike the spider clown. Some people dislike it without even um, knowing the reason why they dislike it. Um, seems like people are disliking it just because they hear it's not a good gene or uh, has issues. And it does have an issue. I don't want to spend too much time on this video talking about that wobble issue. Um, but this girl doesn't seem to have it or is, is very um, low expression of it because I don't really see that wobble. But yeah, this is a girl that is very, very clean. Um, there might be blade floating around in my collection. Um, sometimes you see spiders that still have like a lot of these drip marks coming down the side, but this one has very, very minimal. Uh, Great little girl, great feeder, obviously, now that she's gotten to this size. Um, definitely over 1,200 grams, I think. Um, so I might even try to breed her this season, although I wasn't planning on it. So really happy about making these videos because sometimes I just, you know, don't think about these things until, you know, we have a video um, and that kind of forces me to think about these things. So... This is the spider clown. I think I have one more spider to show you. So let me get that one out. So this one right here, some of you might be surprised to see her in this video because we are talking about um, females that are breeder size or just close to breeder size. This one uh, was one of the reasons why I built an intermediate size rack because putting her into a straight into a 28 quart rack from the grow out tub to a 28 quart tub, uh, she went off of food very briefly. And so now that I have the intermediate rack, um, I put her into one of those tubs that are slightly smaller than this one. She did stay on food and she exploded in growth. Um, so I think that maybe she can go at the end of the season. Um, definitely wasn't part of the plan, but I will be keeping an eye on her and uh, hopefully she will go because she is gorgeous. This, I believe, to be a Super Orange Dream Fire Bee. Um, if you guys have any thoughts, let me know. One of the reasons I am going to breed her, either this season or the next, is to accurately identify her to see if she really is a Super Pastel Fire Bee or maybe there's some other stuff in it. Maybe there's Enchi in it, because there was Enchi in a pairing. Um, I'm trying to show her face to you guys so you can see her neck stripe, but she is not cooperating. So not the thickest of neck stripe, not neck stripe, uh, eye band, sorry, right there. Um, but, uh, so I don't think there's Enchi. And I think if there was Enchi, you get more of a metallic sheen because a lot of Enchi spiders or stinger bees get that metallic color. Um, so just wanted to show that off to you. I think this is the last one that I bred myself. And um, I think in the next video, I'll show you guys some of the animals that I purchased and have grown up to be breeder size. All right, guys. So those are the females that I produced myself here at Lucas Land and Royals and have grown up to be breeding size or at least close to breeding size. Hopefully some of those will go for me later on in the season, but I'm going to set my expectations a little low because I know some of them have just got to size. There is one more female that I do believe will be going for me this season and currently she is locked like I said earlier so I'll put her in the next video. The next video is going to be females that I have purchased and have uh, grown up uh, to breeding size. There's definitely a sense of pride when it comes to growing up your own babies and then having them produce for you. So there's going to be like two generations of animals produced here. I think it's definitely cool to have multiple generations uh, produced in your own facility. Like I said, there's that sense of pride. Not to take away from if you've purchased the animals or if you uh, purchase them as adults, but there's just that 
little difference there um, when you look at that animal and say, I, I hatched you from it, baby. So like I said, I think that's really cool. So that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel and you want to be informed of future uploads, make sure you're subscribed and ring that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching. Please share and I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.